we're going to talk tonight about why you need to become an Adobe Certified Professional. So I believe in certifications. I have several, but I also believe in them because I've had to be a hiring manager. And I can tell you that when I hire somebody, I want to know they know the product. So it's one thing to have a great reel. You need that too. It's another thing to have a decent looking resume. You need that and probably some references. But when it comes down to between choosing two candidates, the one with the certification, all the other things being equal, this is one very easy way to stand out. So my name is Rich Harrington, and I am going to talk to you about these exams. I've actually been an author for the exams in the past, so I've helped write the questions. So while I can't officially tell you what's on the exam, I can very much tell you about the exam and what you're going to need to know uh, as you take a look at it. So whether you're looking for a way to just challenge yourself or you want to improve your chances of getting hired or maybe a raise in pay, I recommend you consider taking the Adobe Certified Professional exams. Uh, they're a great way to really validate your skills and knowledge. And if you have these, it can provide you with a competitive edge. Okay. So um, by the numbers here, these tests are designed by experts. Theoretically, uh, I've been in the room with some of the experts who've designed the test. I helped design the test. I can tell you they are. It's a combination of formal educators and industry professionals. I've been one of those industry professionals. I've also seen other pros. And there is a lot that goes into designing these test questions. They really look at what is needed to get a job. And they really want the people who are hiring managers to feel confident that these certifications mean something. Now, with that said, I have the worst test anxiety. I'm terrible. Probably the only person worse is my teenage daughter. So we do not like tests in this household, except my wife. She's a teacher. She gives a lot of them. Um, but these tests are designed to be real, and uh, but they are passable. Um, the tests are also now integrated with Creative Cloud. So when you actually take the test, this is my favorite part now, half the test is hands-on. So you're actually doing tasks, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, you could take them online or in person. You used to have to go in person, and this meant heading into a certification center. Maybe it wasn't geographically convenient, but during that pandemic, lots of things got figured out how to do online. This was one of them. Uh, each test takes about 50 minutes to pass, and it says 150 hours of experience. Now, I want to be clear. This is not 150 hours of experience using the product because, trust me, no one would pass after just, you know, three or four weeks of using After Effects. It is not that easy. What that means is 150 hours of education, of direct learning. Now, if you're here this week, you're doing it. No one's going to ask you to uh, put up a credential by any means, but you can check this out. And that's really kind of the number of what they recommend. And then each certification is good for three years. Okay. All right. So, um, Glenn, I see you have a hand up. I'm going to unmute you here really quick and we'll try to take your question. Uh, don't bite me though, please. So if you want to ask your question, go ahead really quick. Otherwise you can put it into the chat pod. All right. I'm going to go with, you don't have one. You just have your hand up. No problem. Let's keep going. So what else do you need to know? Well, first up, you can access this week as part of this is that the actual certification prep courses. So if you go to Video Creator Summit, PR Cert Prep or AE Cert Prep for this week, the in-depth courses are live. These are actually the official courses adopted, uh, endorsed by Adobe. I teach the Premiere Pro one and Aaron Stern, a fantastic After Effects instructor, teaches the After Effects one. Aaron's teaching here this week. I hope you've had a chance to check out one of his classes today. He is fantastic. He's one of my favorite instructors to watch. I always learn something from him. You can watch the classes live this week for free. Thanks to the folks over at FMC Training and the, the ones that put on NAB Show. Uh, they're letting us stream these classes to you live. And if you want to, you can add on to your VIP pass, which gets you all the access to all the other classes. Uh, for $129 more, you can add on these recordings and an exam voucher. And that's actually less money than it normally costs to get the, just the exam voucher. So we have a special deal this week. Normally the test is 149 to get certified. You can actually get the certification bundle, which includes the voucher and the materials that you can watch at your own pace uh, to get ready for that test. 
And while I can't guarantee you'll pass, I've had lots of people pass. I get lots of emails and LinkedIn messages of people saying it helped. And that's why I did it. Because as I said to you, I have the worst test anxiety. I totally get it. And when we wrote the test, we really worked hard to make sure that it was a fair representation of real world skills. Okay. All right. Cool. And thank you for just letting me know that the uh, audio was good. I appreciate that. So who am I? I'm going to do this quick. Um, I haven't had a chance to meet all of you, but hopefully at some point, maybe I've helped you with some of the applications you use. I'm a visual storyteller and my job has always been about photography and video. I started school as a journalism major. I got into the web very early, but I've done broadcasting, photography, and also for the last decade, I've helped make and create software tools that rely on AI. So I've worked on a lot of different products over the years. And my favorite job is being a husband and a father. Uh, right now, I've written about 40 books and have released 200 full-length video courses. My production company is Red Pixel in the Washington, D.C. area here. And I am the publisher of a website, Photofocus, that has celebrated, gosh, about 25 years of publishing on the web, which is, seems like a long time. But it's good. And uh, every once in a while, I get to speak at events like these. And I like to be a director. That's what I get to do most often. And also a photographer. But I also edit video. Everyone edits video at this point. I think it's become a requirement. So you can check out any of those courses. And I am a previous co-author of the official Premiere Pro Classroom in a Book, as well as an editor's guide to Adobe Premiere Pro and the Motion Graphics Studio Techniques book uh, with Ian Robinson, another one of our great speakers here who's this week. And uh, yeah, Maxim Iago is the other co-author of Premiere Pro Classroom in a Book. He's here this week. And uh, Jeff Greenberg is also here. He's the co-author of the Editor's Guide. So uh, we worked hard to get you some great speakers this week. I hope you guys enjoy learning from them. All right. That's what I do. And every once in a while, I get to go into TV stations. Let's get back to you. Now, what I want you to know is when you go to LinkedIn, like if you were to check out my page, when you pass these tests, you get badges. Now, that sounds silly, but this does actually stand out. And I want you to see why it's not just a, a silly JPEG or an NFT. So what ultimately happens is once you're certified, besides having the actual credentials and being listed in a directory, uh, you actually get badges that appear on your page. They are added right to your LinkedIn page if you have one, or you get a direct link that you can share with manufacturers. And you see an actual license certification with an Adobe logo right there on the page. It tells you when it was issued. It tells you when it expires. These are good for three years. And when you click the link, it will show you the credential. Now, you can edit these. So if you want to remove the expired ones, which I probably will, although I'm on the fence. Part of me says, maybe it's good to show that I've done this a few times. And the other part of me says, what happens if somebody just sees the expired one? I still haven't made up my mind. But nonetheless, it's been a great day. Uh, you guys, you see the credentials listed on the page. And this is listed right there along with my other professional certification of PMP. So these are real. These are actual real certifications made by the manufacturer with the manufacturer logo. When you click on one of them, it takes you right to the Credly website, which is a website run by Pearson, who is the uh, issuer of the platform and the test itself. And in this case, when you log in, what you'll see is you will see that you are actually certified. Okay. So this will allow you to show the certification off. And if somebody clicks the little verified button here, it actually like goes through these steps and loads them, you know, cause it's really official. It loads one at a time, but it actually spins the wheel and it loads and it shows it's verified. It shows when the badge was issued. Uh, it shows when it was last updated uh, and it adds it all in, which is really cool. And it shows the verified status. Okay. And you get a public page that's on this website that people can browse if they were searching for professional experience folks. You also can customize this page with your uh, social links and your LinkedIn link, as well as share it. So this is the outcome. You know, it's uh, it's your own credential. And uh, you can show these and offer them up to a manufacturer or include the link on your resume. And then when they click, it will take and show that you are genuinely validated. So... Personally, I choose to keep the Premiere Pro one up to date. I keep the After Effects one up to date. And I also do Photoshop because I love using Photoshop. It's one of my areas. And if you do two of those, Premiere plus Photoshop or Premiere plus After Effects, then you'll actually receive the professional in video design. 
So Adobe has these cumulative ones, and then you get a rainbow badge. It's cool. <laughs> uh, and you can find out more about this on their website, but it is a great specification. It means that you do know your stuff and it shows that balance. Okay. All right. What I'd like to do first is go through the exam objectives. And if you guys have any questions along the way, just put it into the chat pod. We'll talk it through. Happy to do so. Okay. So this is what you need to know for each test. Now we're not going to go in depth here. That's what those videos are for, but I'm going to explain it at a high level. But I'm going to do the part that's actually most important. I'm going to then walk you through the mechanics of how the test is structured so you know what to prepare for. So Adobe has worked with the professionals uh, to build these. And the test design specialists are meant that you show proficiency in the applications. And it says necessary to start careers in digital media. I'll tell you, just like After Effects itself, there's nothing easy about that test. This is not entry level. Now, people in college, I do know some that pass this and some schools help prep their students, but these guys in school are spending four years studying and working hands-on. And depending on your age, you know, I didn't get to touch a nonlinear video editing tool until I was out of college, just out of college. Uh, and even that was early. Some of these folks that are in college have been doing nonlinear video editing since they were six, like my daughter. So, uh, you know, just keep in mind that people at different points of time have different access, but this test requires about 150 hours of instruction, not just usage in order to pass. The test is 50 minutes long. And if you have anxiety, that feels like not enough time, but usually it is. And I'll give you some strategies for passing that. It is a combination of multiple choice questions followed by a hands-on section that you take. And the hands-on section is still on the computer, but you're actually remotely controlling a computer. Now the computer you control is always Windows. So if you're like me, someone who spends more time on a Mac, uh, you'll wanna get used to that ahead of time. So you're fine, it'll work on your Mac, but you might wanna just make sure you're familiar with the keyboard shortcuts and things like that, command, control, if you're using keyboard shortcuts or be comfortable with the mouse because none of your customized keyboard shortcuts can be loaded into the test. So you kinda gotta go old school and go to the menu to find things, okay? All right. What else do you need to know? Well, the exams are rigorously reviewed for integrity. And if you take them online, they do watch you so you can't cheat. Okay. And if you take them in the center, they watch you so you can't cheat. So they actually, you know, pop up. You have to have a video camera on. They can see what you're doing. They can make sure that you're not like reaching over and grabbing an iPad and doing a search. You'll be locked out of the browser, but they're watching you to make sure that you're maintaining eye contact on the exam and that you're not multitasking or grabbing resources from the side. If you're in person, it's very similar. You're in a room, you take the test, there's probably a camera or there's a proctor watching you depending upon the size of the room. And you can have these paper for notes, but you can't bring anything in with you. So it's pretty straightforward, okay? All right, so which tests are out there? Well, there's Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, Premiere Pro, After Effects, Animate, and Dreamweaver. Uh, get the ones that matter to your job. Okay. Just getting these to get these don't matter, but getting these in an area that you're proficient in, that you work in gives you that extra edge. So like I said, I've done Premiere, Photoshop, and After Effects, and After Effects is probably the most stressful one. The Photoshop one, after a couple of Photoshop books, one gets to know Photoshop. I think I've used Photoshop for its entire life. That one didn't stress me out, except for the questions about CMYK, because I'm a video guy and... CMYK is not my world, but I got through. So how's the test structured? Well, it's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna walk you through the structure of the test and then we'll talk about the specific knowledge areas that you want to know. First up, Certiport is the administrator for these tests, okay? So Certiport is part of Pearson. Uh, Pearson makes most of the textbooks used in classrooms. And they're also behind a lot of the other certifications for groups like Microsoft, uh, my son is studying virtual reality in school. He's passed three now, actually, of his Unity certifications uh, for Unity, which is software used in the gaming and VR industry. Certiport's behind that as well. So um, they're not new to this. Our partner in this is FMC Training. Uh, a lot of our speakers at this conference actually speak at the live FMC events or have been FMC classroom instructors. So you can actually take in-person training with them. But FMC Training is a very experienced training center. They got physical centers and online groups. And so if you purchase the bundle, you will actually get access to that with a voucher and take the Certiport exam through that. 
So they're great folks and they're giving us a great special. It's actually less expensive than buying the test is normally. So you can get both the training and the exam voucher. Now the test has two parts, like we said, one set of questions that you answer within a window, just multiple choices, like an online quiz and another set that you're going to do inside the actual application. You have 50 minutes to take both tests. Here's the little secret, which is awesome. When you get to the midpoint of the test, there's a little pause. You're supposed to like review things and reread the instructions before you take the next test. And it just kind of gets you there. You can't hang out forever, but you can actually take a moment and just read those instructions super slow with a few deep breaths and meditation or whatever you do to relax. I find that like just being able to let that out and then jump into the next part of the test is kind of easy and the timer stops at that midsection so you can pause for a moment. You can't get up and go to the bathroom. You can't leave the room. They won't let you back, but you know, it's pretty good. All right, so here's the general structure. There's a little tutorial at the beginning. It explains how the test is gonna work. Then you read the questions and there's a timer running and then you get to a section at the end where if you've marked any questions for review, you see a list and you can jump back to them. And that's important because if you hit a question and you're really stuck, you can skip it and then go back to it later. Uh, you can only go back when you're within the section. So you can't be in the hands-on section and then jump back. So you can go back when you get to the end of that section. So if you feel like, you know, I'm just going to skip this, go to the next one, you can do that. Another thing I'll point out is each time you take the test, and yes, you can actually retake the test if you'd like, if it doesn't go well the first time. Some people have test anxiety, take it once, get it out of your system. Um, you can retake the test every two weeks uh, for I believe three times. Uh, you have to pay each time, but you can retake it. And if you do, the questions are different. So there's a large bank of questions. And so you just can't, it's kind of the look of the draw which questions come up, but they all come up based upon the same recipes we're going to talk up later. So they're evenly balanced across the knowledge areas. Once that first section is done, there's a little tutorial that explains how the hands-on tests work. And effectively, you're remotely controlling another computer running Premiere Pro or Photoshop or After Effects. And when you get to the end and you're all done, same thing. You can mark a question for review and go back to it. And then when it's all over, they ask for feedback. Were there any questions that you found problematic or seemed to have the wrong answers or none of the answers were valid? You can leave feedback about that to make the test better. All right. So when the first section's done, you hit that summary, you review it. Once you skip the section and go to the next section, you cannot go back. Don't spend too much time reviewing things. Don't overly do this. But if you want to read your answers one more time, you should have time for it. Then there's the tutorial. Again, the tutorials are not timed, so you can skip past that very quickly, or you can pause there if you want. The timer stops when you're in the tutorial sections. Now, the navigation is pretty straightforward. It is not anything other than a super clean, minimalist user interface. Okay, so it kind of looks like this. All right, this is not a fancy website. It is just a straightforward certification engine. So you'll see the question. This is question one of 10, 10 of 10. So you know how many questions you have in the section. You'll see your total time. That's for the whole exam. Remember, you have 50 minutes to complete both sections. That's not per section, that's both sections. If you really screw something up, like it was the live test and somehow you just move things around or you accidentally closed a window, you can reset it. One time when I was taking the test, the machine I was remotely controlling crashed. They paused the timer, basically gave me the time back a little bit. Uh, they got it up and running and then the timer started again. So they have ways of dealing with things like that if it happens. Sometimes it's straight up multiple choice. Sometimes it's dragging things over to match. Sometimes it's click on different things to interact. It's like most standard computer-based training. And then if you want, you can mark it for review or mark it that you want to leave feedback. Once you're all done, you'll go to the summary section. Generally speaking, don't go to the summary early, but you can go back if you need to. Okay, anybody have any questions so far? If you do, feel free to put them in the Q&A pod or in the chat. I appreciate you guys coming out tonight and want to make this as useful as possible as I can for you. All right, summary page. You just add your own feedback, not a big deal. 
I can assure you though, it does get read and that does help them make the test better. So this is what it looks like when you get to that summary section. If you marked a question for review, there'll be a flag on it. It's like flagging an image in Lightroom. Uh, you marked it and then you can jump back to it if you wanted to read it again. Maybe you are uncertain or maybe you just wanted to skip that one and get through the others as quick as possible and then go back and leave a little bit of time. I would suggest that you get through this stuff in 20 minutes. Try to finish the multiple choice section in 20 minutes or less so you have a little more time for the hands-on section. The hands-on section will take longer. Uh, I usually try to get through the test questions in about 10 to 15 minutes. So usually there's 10 to 15 of the multiple choice questions uh, that are in that first section. And so that's about a minute a question, which if you're spending more time thinking than that, you won't, and you're not allowed to look things up. So you would spend, you know, you don't have time to go looking for answers either. Okay. All right. This part is actually kind of cool. It's these task sections and they'll say to you things like, Hey, go ahead and look at the sequence, remove any gaps adjust the speaker duration so that it is a sound bite of this duration, and then add the title graphic above the speaker. And so you'll have like a bit of stuff and a partially cut together timeline. You'll actually have to do things. It's like following instructions. So it's really straightforward, but they tell you what they want you to do. The tasks will generally have a starter project loaded. Uh, when you're done, you go to the next step. You don't have to worry about saving. It'll automatically register what you're doing. And you're like, well, what happens if I do like one of the things wrong? There is partial credit. So do everything that you can do. Absolutely read it through. If you know how to do five of the six things, do five of the six things because each thing is graded and there. Now, they don't care the order you do them in. They don't care if you're a keyboard person, as long as you know the default shortcuts or you use a mouse. They don't care if you drag to the timeline or you are a precision editor and you load it and mark your ins and outs and then cut it in. They just want to see the end results. So it's pretty straightforward. And when you click the next button or the back button, then it updates. So you'll see the application, you'll see any elements. And so here it said things like, hey, import the beak, the clip called B into the project, make a sequence and name it nature. And then uh, put the B and the butterfly clips in for five seconds each. So here you showed multiple steps. Now you don't need to worry about adding a transition. It didn't say add a transition. It didn't say color correct it. You don't get extra points for fixing the bad footage. Okay. So don't feel like you have to color correct. I mean, when I see footage that needs color correction, it's like twitching or, you know, if it doesn't say audio mix, you don't need to audio mix. Sometimes it does but just do what's asked of you and then go to the next step, okay? So it's pretty much like this. You are free to change things or rearrange it, but the questions load into an actual panel here right inside the app. So the questions are actually inside Premiere Pro or After Effects or Photoshop in a floating panel. You can move that panel, you can close that panel to minimize it, but it is just like any other Adobe app. Pretty much everything in the app is going to work. Uh, key things that don't work, the help menu. You can't access preferences generally, so you can't go in and check preferences. Um, and I can't remember if tooltips are on or not. For a while they were, for a while they weren't. Um, you know, so But you really don't have time to be hovering anyway, so you, know, you really have to kind of know what things are. Okay. If it crashes or you need to quit, uh, they will resume where you left off and anything you've finished up to that point will register. So if it crashed on exam question six, you'd start right back off on exam question six, okay? Uh, you can't access open, help, bridge, Adobe stock, or the libraries, okay? Don't try to open them. Everything you need is inside the test itself, okay? Now, the workspace is just like any other workspace in an Adobe app. And to that nature, I'm going to actually open up an Adobe app so you can see workspaces for a moment because not everybody understands workspaces. And I want to give you a couple of tips so you can work better with workspaces. So I'm going to open up, um, we'll do After Effects actually, that'll be fine. So, but most Adobe apps have the same thing with workspaces. 
by the way, while I'm here and getting that open, uh, if you haven't done so, please head on over to the Video Creator Summit. We've got four more days of training. And as we mentioned earlier here at the start of this class, uh, we actually do have the ability, uh, if you head on over there, the classes are posted for the Premier and After Effects certifications. But you can check out one of the bundles, the add-on here. It's fantastic. We'll put those links up for the classes later. Now, I mentioned uh, that I wanted to show you what this looks like, and that's because I want you to feel comfortable with workspaces. So workspaces are under the window menu, workspace. And so if you need to change the layout, you can. So, you know, like if you're given a color correction task and you want to switch to the color workspace, you can do it. When you do, the certification panel is supposed to stay in the workspace, but if for some reason it's hidden or you don't see it, you will find it under the window or under extensions, but it'll appear like a panel in here and you can just choose it and it will pop up and open and that's fine. Remember when you're working inside of these apps, if you press the tilde key, you can maximize any of these areas. That works when you're just editing or designing too. Uh, the tilde key on a US keyboard is next to the number one key. If you're in a different country that uses a different keyboard, it's just called maximize frame under cursor. And you'll find that inside the preferences of Premiere or After Effects or the keyboard shortcut list. But usually it's the tilde key or the key next to the number one on a keyboard. And it just makes it a little bit easier to navigate. Okay. All right. So it's like any other panel. So if you need to, you can undock a panel. You can click here and choose undock. And now you can move that around. You'll be on a single monitor system, but you can move that around. You can resize it temporarily if you need to, to make more room and then open it up when you need the instructions. It's all there. But if you accidentally close it, you can bring it back or just choose window workspace reset and everything will go back to the default places. Okay. All right. And that undock and reset works with all the panels. So if you're not used to using workspaces in these apps, use them. They're totally a huge time saver. Uh, really make it easier to navigate within the apps. All right, so if you close the panel by mistake, which will happen, trust me, window workspace certification test, boom, brings it back. If you need to, you can also choose window workspace reset to save layout. Now for me, I tend to just bounce into the workspace that I need, and then I go back to the certification workspace. You really, really should switch back to the certification workspace before you go to the next test question. So that way all the panels are loaded because when the software looks at what you did, it's gonna to wanna to look and check and see how things were built. So trust me, switch back to the default workspace if you change to a custom workspace while you were building stuff. So you'll find that under the window menu there, nice and simple, certification test or reset, okay? Um, don't reset the default workspaces, but the certification workspace is usually visible in those, so you should be okay. You can always bring it back from the Windows menu. Um, but it has all the controls to navigate. It's kind of like a miniature version of the other exam you saw. So when you're in here, you'll see the tasks. You'll see that timer. Remember, you got 50 minutes to get through all the tests, the first part and the second part. If something goes really wrong, like you really screwed the project up, reset task will like zap it and reload it to the starting position. Um, if you wanna flag it, you can mark it for feedback or for review. Uh, feedback means you wanna give them comments about it. Review means you want to look it over, okay? Um, if you get confused along the way, the help button here will summarize things about how the layout is there. It's pretty straightforward, okay? Um, always read what the panel says. Read it twice, then do it, and when you're done, reread through the steps and make sure you don't miss anything. The most common way that people get points on this wrong is that they just read it and they do it from memory. Trust me, treat it like it was notes that were sent over from the client in an email. Just read through it, check your work, read through it. Yep, good, next question, okay? Um, you won't need to change any of the settings or the preferences for the app. And don't start renaming things. Like if you don't like the way the layers are named, leave them alone. Don't rename the clips, okay? That's because that stuff is used when they go through and check to see how things were built. So trust me, fight any of those urges you have to organize the project, 
okay? If it says, you know, move this to a bin, then move it. But if it's already in a bin, leave it there. Don't start subclipping. Don't start renaming things. Trust me, just use what's there and, you know, follow the instructions. Do no more, do no less, okay? All right. Um, it's pretty straightforward. The exhibit will also be a tab sometimes, and this will give you a visual representation. So sometimes they'll just say things somewhat vaguely, but on purpose, like it was the real world with a client. And then I'll say things like, make it look like this, and they'll show you a picture that you're supposed to accomplish. Or rearrange the tracks in the timeline so that it looks this way. And they'll show you what it looks like. So instead of telling you, like in After Effects, oh, use a track mat on this layer, they might show you something where it is a track mat, and they want you to know what the feature is to go and find it. That's one way that they make the test more realistic. You know, the client would never say, I'd like you to use a track mat on layer two, but they'll you're looking at a timeline and you've got the different layers and they're in the wrong order and you look at the visual, you have to know how to look at that and then translate it to what's in your timeline to build it. At the end, there's the summary. You just look it over. Again, if there's anything you want to go back on, you can. If you got time left, you'll see it. If you're not in the summary, it's okay. It'll take you there at the very end. They'll give you a warning as you get to the end. And when you're all set, you click the finish section button, okay? Now, this is your time to give feedback. Imer's no longer running. Um, don't be snarky. It's hard for me to not be snarky. It's like built in after years of working in the video industry, but you leave feedback and it does a couple of things. One, if there was anything technically wrong with the exam, uh, you have a chance to leave feedback. Uh, additionally, for example, here's one piece of feedback I frequently, frequently give. One of the sections has a whole bunch of information in it about business practices. Well, in the past, they would have questions on copyright and such. And those questions were difficult because they didn't really translate internationally. Copyright law is not international. I had once seen on an exam a question that was clearly written in Britain as well. Now they've switched to things like having questions about, say, Creative Commons, which is a universal licensing language, which I'd suggest you brush up on. But that came from people providing feedback about the exam. Okay, so that's an idea there where if you see and you feel something is not on target or there was also a technical problem or something wrong with the structure, you can provide that feedback. Um, when you're all done, you click Next. And you can also see if you marked specific questions for feedback. This lets you go back, reread the question, and you can see why you had feedback, and then you can leave the feedback. You can't change your answer. You don't get more time to go modify things, but you can see it so you can put it back into your brain. So if you see something that bothers you, just click the Mark Feedback button. You don't have to keep it in your brain the whole time. At the end of the test, you can go back and see it, okay? And then you get your score report. You will know immediately if you passed or failed, like immediately. It's on the screen. Um, it will be then eventually uploaded and you'll get a, a link if you need to download it to show it to your employer or a boss or to put it with your resume. You don't actually have to show anybody this unless it's between you and the person. Passing is passing. Um, you know, I'll tell you my highest scoring exams are Photoshop. My lowest scoring exams are After Effects. I'd written the official, one of the official After Effects books and I still failed an After Effects test. Like I said, I had anxiety with tests. So it really gets in my way sometimes. But nobody needs to see your scores, but if your employer is paying for this or it's part of a raise, they might ask. But for the most part, passing is passing. And so what you'll see is it'll look a little bit like this. Uh, the candidate name will be filled in and it would say certified professional, certified. So there used to be a certified associate program and a certified professional program. Those were combined into the, uh, the Adobe Certified Expert and the Adobe Certified Associate were merged into the Adobe Certified Professional Program. You'll see an exam report, you'll see the test listed, and it will tell you the required score. Generally, you have to get uh, a minimum of 700 out of 1,000 points. So that's a 70. So you need a 70% on the test. You can get bad scores in an individual section and still pass. 
So, you know, this is not a, a real test one here, but you can see that this person clearly did better in some sections and worse in others. And that's okay. As long as you have 70% of the correct answers, you will pass. Okay. All right. If there's any questions, put them in the Q&A. Uh, we will also open up the mics at the end. If anybody has questions, we can talk through things. Um, but let's talk real quickly about two of the tests with specificity. So if you want to know more of what's on the test, first up, as we mentioned, check out the bundles we have. It includes video training, and it'll teach you how to know the core skills. It's a great refresher. The courses are multiple hours long, and they're just good to help lift your skills, but they cover everything that's on there. Uh, additionally, if you go to the Adobe Certified Professional site, which is certifiedprofessional.adobe.com, they do list the requirements out and kind of show you what this looks like. Okay, so I'll take you there really quick to show this to you. Let me just bounce over. There we go. And on each of these pages, they do have a little bit of information. Now, what they've done is they have the requirement listed, and if you twirl it down, it'll show you this part here. So when you read, oh, I didn't know about projects and compositions. What you're paying attention to here is this part here that says key concepts, right? So if you're not familiar with rendering, you need to be familiar with it. If you don't know exactly about aspect ratio, well, then you need to brush up on that. So this will tell you things. So you literally need to make sure you understand each of these things. It doesn't mean that they're all gonna come up on the test, but it does mean that they are all in the bank of test questions. I guarantee you everything on this list has a question or more about it. So you will see most of these things on the test. Now they do put some links here to some extra tutorials and YouTube tutorials. They're by a bunch of different people. Some of them are great folks, most of them are. Uh, you can check that out. I do think that the uh, certified courses are a nicer way to go because it really keeps you focused and in depth but you learn your way. Uh, if you wanna check those out, remember when you head on over to the Video Creator Summit, I think most of you are there this week already watching classes, uh, you can watch the classes live for free for 48 hours. We actually have these certification prep courses up uh, until the end of the week, and you can watch them there too. And we'll leave them up on Friday as well so that you can watch them so that, you know, if you're watching all the regular classes, you can see that, but you can brush up uh, onto that. But if you want the whole bundle, then what you're going to need to do is, you know, pick up the bundle and then you'll give you the ability to watch the classes afterwards at your own pace. Uh, when you pick up one of the bundles, uh, $250 for both Premiere and After Effects, when you purchase the pass, you'll see that there is an extra add-on when you go to checkout. And that add-on will include the ability of adding the certification here. So you just flip the switch if you want it, and that will give you a voucher to take either the Premiere or After Effects test and it will give you access to the certification prep videos that you can watch and go through at your own pace. I'm the instructor for the uh, Premiere one. I'll talk a little slower in that video, I promise, uh, but it'll walk you through all the core things that you need to know, okay? All right, let's go back to where we were. So for Premiere, there's a section on working in the video industry, project setup and interface, organizing projects, creating and modifying elements, and publishing. If we break that down, working in the video industry is probably actually the trickiest section because it's gonna feel like it's trivia night at uh, where you went to college, but it's all real stuff. It's just very random what you'll see. So there'll be key terms. They might be asking about like stages of production or different job roles or how to mitigate risk on a project or you know what this person's uh, job title would be with a description. So it really does make sure that you are an actual video industry person and not just a hobbyist or somebody who hasn't worked in an environment where professional terminology would be used. Uh, then the next section on project setup and interface includes building sequences, managing and working with workspaces, the very vague, although I'll say just check out the thing, the non-visible design tools. So this is, covers a lot of different things. It's basically anything you can't see but that affects things. Uh, and then how to import assets into the project. You then also need to know how to organize projects. So this includes renaming if they tell you to, don't rename things if they don't, but renaming things, building things, modifying track settings and sequence settings, and controlling the output of tracks. Where does the audio get uh, routed to? 
lots of visual elements, all the core tools, working with titles, transforming footage, effects, keyframes, and audio. Uh, and unlike the past, where the test would be updated periodically, they're actually updated frequently for each new version of the product, each major version of the product. So when you get certified, it's gonna be most likely on the current product, unless the brand new update just shipped, but still it'll be usually within six months of the, the major version when you're taking it. Each test is good for a three year period. At the end of that three year period, you have to recertify. Uh, and then the last section is on publishing digital media. So this will include exporting the files, as well as how to use the media manager and how to back up things and back up a project. Okay, I do see a question. Let me take that before we go on to the After Effects questions. So uh, you have taken the After Effects test and you passed it, that's great, but you struggled with the tasks, okay? Um, are there significant differences? So um, the task part, you know, they're going to vary. And obviously it's sometimes harder to step into someone else's project because it might be organized differently than how you want. But what I would suggest is make sure you look at the, uh, you almost all the tests have an exhibit. So look at the visual of what they're trying to accomplish and then read the question a few times. It'll generally help. And then beyond that, just, you know, try to work through the things, you know, if you're struggling with a question, skip it, go to the next ones that are easy. And then you'll have time to go back and rework with the ones that you needed more time for. So I generally will go through and if I can't do it immediately, I'll answer the next question if I can, but mark that one for review. And then you can go back and have a better idea of how much time you have left. Because if you're struggling with one and you just don't go to the next one, then you're looking at that timer tick down and it starts to add to the anxiety. Uh, I do think that the actual mechanics of the system are a little more stable. So if you've taken the test years ago, uh, this was newer software at the remote control thing. So they definitely, it's a more responsive machine and it feels very much like you're working on a machine in front of you. Uh, obviously it's not going to be streaming really high quality video or anything, but it is decent and you can really work. And I would suggest uh, making sure you take the test on a monitor with larger resolution if you're taking it at home. Uh, and that might actually make it more comfortable too for you, Marilena, because if you're taking the test at home, you could actually, you know, put it on a screen you're used to looking at. I have a huge screen in front of me. It makes it way easier to see things than on a little screen or somebody else's screen at a testing center. Okay? I hope that helps. All right. The other test on After Effects uh, is pretty straightforward. And this one is similarly structured to the one in Premiere. And uh, you'll see a lot of repetition between the headings. Working in the visual effects and motion graphics industry, setting up projects, organizing projects, creating elements, and publishing. But the devil is, of course, in the details. So as you go into each of these sections, you'll see more about it. So this one will ask you to understand more about the audience and some basic project management. Again, stuff on copyright and permissions. Rush up on Creative Commons, trust me. Key terminology that you need to know, as well as some principles and best practices for work. If you've been working, you'll be fine. The only part that will be weird for most folks is this one. And so again, brush up on Creative Commons. When you import, you'll have to do some basic organization. Make a project, adjust the settings, build a comp. You'll have to switch between workspaces, importing assets. The timeline panel, you need to know how to navigate and you need to be comfortable going to specific times. So either with the go-to shortcut or clicking on it to move the playhead or current time indicator. Also, make sure you feel comfortable with masks and track mats. I know a lot of people just use one or the other, but you need to know how to use both, at least on the test. And there are benefits to knowing both anyways in the real world, but make sure you don't just only know one. Uh, blending modes are good too, and being familiar at a high level of which blending mode. Uh, the other steps going to include working with the type tool, being able to make adjustments, make sure if you're in either product that you're familiar with Lumetri, that will come up for sure. Modifying media. This includes things like interpreting the frame rate or reversing the alpha channel, know how to use the interpret command, know how to set in and out points up in the project window, how to manipulate it. Certainly how to add keyframes and things like keyframe interpolation. So the different shapes of keyframes and the ease. 
There's a lot of different keyframe types in After Effects, and even I sometimes forget the difference between them, although I love roving keyframes. That's my favorite. Make sure you brush up on those and you know open up the help menu and relook at that before you start the test just to put it all in your brain, okay? Uh, and then publishing will include the same thing, getting the comp ready, adjusting settings like resolution, for example, or frame rate, and then rendering. All the rendering will be inside of After Effects. You don't need to know Adobe Media Encoder. It's just about After Effects.